hey, so I figured since I'm going to make these little GeoGebra uh, files for you all to play with, I may as well record myself while I do it um, so that you have sort of a, a short, concise uh, how-to uh, that's a little easier to rewatch maybe than our uh, almost two-hour lesson earlier. So here goes. So I'm in GeoGebra 5 and I haven't messed with anything yet. First thing I'm going to do is right click and hide my axes and my grid. I'm selecting my point tool to define a point that I'm going to call A. And I want that point to be the mathematical origin on the Cartesian plane that has coordinates 0, 0. So I double clicked on that point over here in algebra and changed the coordinates. Still selecting my point tool, I'm going to click again to get a, a second point, point B, and I like my point B uh, to have coordinates 1, 0. So it's to the right here. Now I'm going to grab my move tool to kind of recenter, and I'm scrolling up with my scroll wheel because um, I, I want this to be zoomed in a little bit more. So now I'm going to grab my circle with center through point tool and I'm going to draw a circle centered at point A. So I click at point A and then I'm going to click on point B to define that circle. And you can see that because of how I defined my center and this point to define my radius, this circle is our nice unit circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, so now I'm also wanting to draw a horizontal line through those two points. So I want to make sure I have my line tool here. And I'm going to click point A and then point B. Recenter just a little bit here. Next, I want to construct a perpendicular to point A um, or through point A to that horizontal line. So I'm going to click on my perpendicular line tool. I'm going to select point A and then I'm selecting the line that I want it perpendicular to. Um, now I also um, now you know want to do a few different things. I want radial divisions um, in addition to just my horizontal and my vertical and I want to construct a square around this circle. So let's first maybe do our radial divisions since that's what we did um, in class this morning. And to do that, I'm going to um, click the little arrow by my perpendicular line tool and I want my angle bisector tool. And I want to bisect this angle right here and I want to do it by clicking the two lines rather than clicking three points to define the angle because when I do that it's going to define the angle bisector here between those two lines and also here between the extensions of those two lines. And then I can just do this a couple more times to define that bisector between each of the additional pairs that we have. And now I have um, my nice 16 radial divisions about my circle. So then in order to construct our square, um, I think in class this morning, I constructed the top first, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and construct this right-hand side since I already have this point B defined. And I'm going to go where my angle bisector tool is and put it back on my perpendicular line tool. And I'm going to construct a vertical line through point B that's perpendicular to my horizontal. So that's what I did there. And now to construct the other three sides of my square, I'm going to reflect this line around. So I want this reflect about line tool here. And I'm going to get my left hand side by selecting this vertical line and I'm going to reflect it over that central vertical. And these two lines right here, these two radials, are the diagonals of my square. 
And so to get my top line, what I can do is I can select either the right or left line and I can reflect it over a diagonal. If I were selecting this left one, I would reflect it over that diagonal. So I've selected the right and I'm gonna reflect it over this diagonal. And then I'm gonna select the right line again and reflect it over this diagonal to define the bottom side of my square. So now I've got um, my radial divisions about the center of, of my circle. I've got my square defined. Next, I want my proportioning circle in here. And to do this, I'm gonna have to define um, a few more points. And to do this, so we have normally with ruler and compass, um, we see an intersection as a point defined, but without telling GeoGebra that we want to point at that intersection, it doesn't go ahead and define a point, but we need points in order to define lines and in order to define circles. So I'm gonna go over here to the point tool, but I don't want the point tool. I want to drop down and go to my intersect tool. And that's what tells GeoGebra that I want an intersection. And so I'm gonna define this point right here that's the intersection of this line and this line. I can do that either by clicking on those two lines successively, like so. So this one and this one, and it finds the intersection of those. Or I could just click directly on that intersection. Um, and most of the time GeoGebra will know what you're trying to do um, and it'll put the intersection at the, at the correct place, mathematically correct place. If you just use the point tool and click on a spot, it's not gonna be exact and it's not gonna snap to the intersection. So I'm gonna keep my intersect tool and I also want to point here at, um, at the top and notice here, I, it was just fine just clicking on the intersection. And I'm gonna use those two points again to define a circle centered here with this radius and this intersection with my radial line is my next important point that I want. And so I want this intersection. Again, I could have clicked on the line and the circle um, and that would have found that point also. Um, but if I click on a line and a circle because they intersect at two points, um, that would have also found this point of, of intersection, which is, is totally fine. So now, once I have this key point defined, that's where I wanna start defining the edges of my petals. And this point will define um, a line parallel to my vertical. So I wanna go to this perpendicular line tool, click the drop down to get parallel line. And with that, I can select a point that I wanna draw a line through and then the line that I want that to be parallel to. And I wanna change the, the color of this line. So I'm gonna use my, my move or select tool and I'm gonna click on that line that I wanna change the color of. Um, if you don't already have your property menus uh, menu showing, you can right click on that line um, to change the object properties and this will, um, this will show up. I just wanna change the color. Um, I'm gonna change it to blue. You can also change the thickness. Um, I'm gonna make it fully opaque also. Um, you can change it to dotted lines, all, all kinds of fun stuff. So um, I want a solid, opaque, um, thin blue line here. And now um, the magic sort of happens and we're just gonna reflect this line all the way around. Um, so I'm gonna reflect it first across this radial line because we're gonna have mirror symmetry here. Then I'm gonna reflect this one about my vertical. And then I'm gonna reflect that one over this radial line. And so now I have uh, four sides of this petal here defined. In order to define the top two, um, sides of my petal, I can do a number of different things. Um, I tried to show in class the more general idea of using this angle bisector to help us. Um, we can also just define a point here um, as if we were gonna inscribe an octagon and use that line. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you the, the angle bisector trick. So what 
um, what we want. Again, it's under this parallel line tool um, and angle bisector is what I want. But this time, I really just want to use the three points to define it. So I'm going to click on point D, point C, and then point E. And so that defined my angle bisector. Um, this isn't part of my construction. Um, I like to, to color my angle bisectors green because that color kind of fades into the background. So then um, what I'm going to do now is that angle bisector I'm going to use as a mirror line to reflect this first um, line that I use to define the edges of my petals. I'm going to reflect that over that angle bisector. And notice that that line exactly defines um, you know, one edge of that inscribed octagon. And so now what I can do is I can reflect that line across my vertical, and now I have my full, uh, my full petal here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my intersection tool to define the rest of these vertices of that petal polygon. And I'm going to draw in a polygon. But before I do that, I want to change my default preferences. So I'm going to go over here to my preferences. And I'm going to go over here to defaults. And so what this is going to do is it's going to set um, what all future objects of a particular type look like. So I'm going to go over here to polygon. And I want, um, I just like black. Uh, Black's kind of nice. Um, and then my style, I like these to be really thick and opaque solid line. And so now when I go to my polygon tool, not regular polygon or rigid or vector polygon, just polygon, um, as long as I have all of the vertices of my polygon defined, I can just click successive vertices and that gives me my polygon. So now that I have one petal, I can just reflect this thing around. So I'm going to click on my polygon and reflect it over this line, click on my polygon, reflect it over that line, etc. And I'm just going to reflect this all the way around. I can kind of zoom out so you can see that. Oops, a little bit better. Sorry, my phone's blowing up in the background. So now I have all of um, all those polygons. And so all I'm missing are the quarter octagons at the corners and my, my central star. So to define this quarter octagon, I'm going to reflect. So I'm using my reflect about line tool. I'm going to reflect this line across that main diagonal. I'm going to determine. Um, so sometimes when you click on an intersection, it selects a line. So I just selected the other line that I wanted it to intersect with. Um, but so I'm going to define those other three intersection points of that polygon, select my polygon tool, and draw this little guy here. And now I need to define the central star. So again, I'm just going to reflect some things around um, until I have the whole thing. Um, and so you can you know, slow this down um, as you need to, to look at what I'm clicking on and then what I'm clicking on second to reflect over. So first I collect the one that uh, I click the one that I want to reflect, and then I click the one that I want to reflect it over. And so now I have that full star. I already have the outer vertices that I need from reflecting my petals around. And I just need these inner vertices. And so now I can draw in that polygon. And that gives us our central star. And I can also reflect my partial octagon over. So I just held down control while I clicked multiple 
Um, and so now what you can do is you can hide um, all of the, um, oops, excuse me, I need to pause. Okay, so where was I? Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide um, some of the information that we have here. And when I'm doing that, I, I like to really see a, a more organized list in my algebra over here. So I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to sort my objects by type. And so now I see um, my conics all together. So those are my circles. I see the hexagons all together. I see the lines all together, etc. So I want to hide most of my lines, but I don't want to hide the ones that are um, defining my square just yet. Um, and by having these lines that I use to define my petals a different color, um, it makes it really easy to see where they are in the menu over here, because um, I can just easily kind of click on all the ones that are um, of a particular color. Oh, but I missed, which one did I miss? I missed this one. Oh, there it is at the bottom. Um, so I still have my radial lines visible. Um, that's fine. I just wanted to declutter a little bit. Um, I'm going to also, so I'm clicking on, I'm right clicking and clicking on show object. And so we don't want to delete anything because that will delete things that are dependent on that object. So we just want to hide them. Um, I also want to hide these labels. Um, so I'm going to hide my points. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to hide my points just yet, and I'm not going to hide the labels just yet because then I'll just have to rehide them. But so I'm going to mirror this thing around to expand my pattern. Um, and so you'll see kind of, you know, why I, I need to leave some things um, in a second. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And so I could with my um, my move tool, I can right click and select all of these things. You do kind of have to be a little bit careful when you do that because sometimes it'll also um, select things that you don't want, like it might select um, lines accidentally. Um, and also the fact that I have some points selected that I might not want, um, I'm going to end up with multiple points at those points, which can can feel a little bit problematic later, but this is sort of a quick and easy way to do this. Um, so anyway, so what we want to do is reflect about a line and I'm just going to reflect this thing a few times in order to, to make a bigger tile. And so what I'm going to do with my reflect about line tool is I'm right clicking and selecting all the things that I want to reflect. You can also, if you just want to select a few, you can control click to select just the ones that you want to reflect. And then I'm going to click on the line that I want to reflect about. Now, I actually don't really want all of that stuff. So I'm going to undo that because I don't really want, um, oops. Oh, <laughs> um, I don't really want all of this information. I really only want some of it. So I'm going to go back to my reflect outline tool and I want just these bits. I don't want this stuff down here. So I selected those and I'm going to reflect over my line here. And before I start reflecting around, I want to edit this just to get the parts um, that I really want. And so what I want is a half star and half petals up here. So I'm going to grab my polygon tool and use the vertices that are already there. And then I'm going to right click on that whole petal and hide it. And I could hide it um, first if I wanted to. I kind of um, like seeing it there while I'm, I'm tracing the half petal over it. Um, so there's that. I'm going to hide now the one underneath. And I want to do the same thing for this star here. So I've got my half star 
and I'm hiding that object. So notice um, every time I want to click on an object to mess with its properties or to show it or hide it or I can rename it or whatever, I'm always going back to this move tool um, because you don't want to accidentally apply one of these transformations to something when you're clicking on it. Um, so just to be careful, I always go back to my to my move tool. So then this bit, I want to reflect um, a couple more times. So this whole thing I want at the bottom, the left and the right. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my reflect about line tool. I'm gonna select all of these parts. And now I'm going to reflect this about my diagonal. So that's fun. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing again. So I'm selecting that exact same set of things. This time I'm gonna go ahead and select um, these also. Kind of do this all in one go. And then I'm gonna reflect over this diagonal. So that's kind of fun, right? And so now I just need to fill in the corners. And to do that, I need these pieces of information um, here. So I'm reflecting those there. Again, I want this half petal. I'm gonna be kind of lazy actually. And I'm just gonna actually not copy that petal, but I'm gonna take this half petal I already drew and reflected about that line since I've already got one there. Um, but I do need to construct my quarter star here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, I notice that I don't have an intersection point defined for the center of this star yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and then now I'm going to draw in that quarter star and I'm going to hide that half star. And we won't have all these um, leftover points here at the end. Um, but now I have a nice corner bit um, that I can, can now reflect. So I'm going back to my reflect about line tool. And I'm going to reflect that boop, over the vertical line. And maybe I'll go ahead and select all of those um, over the horizontal line. Now, the only thing that I, I don't like about this right now um, are these octagons that are kind of made of, of four quarters. Um, and so I'm actually, I'm gonna get rid of those. <laughs> um, I just put them in so we can see the pattern, but um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and, and draw in a full octagon in that location so that it um, doesn't have the borders drawn in. So I'm gonna grab my polygon tool. I already have the vertices that I need there for that. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw one in. Bam, there it is. I'm gonna use my reflection tool. Um, I'm usually try to sort of careful about selecting a line for my reflection um, where I can clearly click on just that line as opposed to that line inside a shape um, when I'm doing that. Um, because sometimes it'll accidentally reflect over the wrong thing and that can be kind of a pain. So I just selected both of those octagons and I'm reflecting them over the horizontal. So I've got my whole pattern here and um, now I'm just gonna clean up the rest of it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide the rest of my lines. So I'm gonna select, oh, see, I was accidentally um, still on my tool. <laughs> so I don't know what I accidentally did there. I may have a line that I didn't need. Um, but now that I'm on the correct tool, um, I'm going to select those and click show object to hide them. Um, sometimes it takes a minute, especially um, if your computer is a little bit slower. Um, so I've got 
my conics hidden. I'm going to go ahead and hide all of these points. So getting rid of, of all those points, they'll disappear in a second. And um, I think the only thing I have left to do is hide all these labels. And all of these labels that you see here um, are labels for the line segments of the polygon. So I don't need to go to hexagon, polygon, quadrilateral. All I need to do here is go to segment because when GeoGebra defines these polygons, um, what it's actually doing is defining the series of line segments that define that polygon. So I'm going to right click on the name segment here. And so that'll define the properties for all of them. Um, I want to show them. I don't want them to disappear, but I'm going to click on show label to hide all those labels. And there we have um, our nice um, GeoGebra there. So I hope that that was helpful and a little bit shorter of a walkthrough um, that you can um, use to pause or, you know, um, slow down the speed um, as necessary. Thanks.